time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, and that's P-A-Y-N-E, of course, along with Chief Investment Officer, the man with the plan, happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious October weekend? That's what it is, Rye. It's, uh, it's October. We're finally seeing the sunshine. A little bit late, but I'll take it. You know what? We'll take what we can get. I mean, we have Got not it. seen a lot of sun this year, so it's uh, it's been lousy weather, but it's always sunny here, Bob, at the Payne Capital Management Radio Show. What do you got for us this week? Well, apparently, Bob, from uh, reading the news this week, Chinese food can actually be a very good way to improve your financial situation. Oh, do tell. Well, apparently, a lotto winner in New Jersey won a million dollars playing the same numbers he received in a fortune cookie years ago. Well, that's, that goes to show you, Rye. The cookies get stale, but the number doesn't. <laughs> Who knew that the real way to wealth was to uh, you know, utilize those numbers from your fortune cookie? We got to implement that into our financial planning practice somehow, Bob. But you know, I do like the fact that the lotto winner said that him and his wife were going to pay off their current bills and their mortgage and put the rest in savings. I like that fiscal discipline. It speaks to my heart. Yeah, I like that, Rye. Paying a voluntary tax by the uninformed. That's what I call the lottery. <laughs> it doesn't usually work out that rosy. <laughs> well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about financial warning signs. We're going to discuss the signs you need to be aware of that indicate you're not prepared financially and how to address some of these four warnings. We're going to talk about emotions and retirement planning. Sadly, our human nature tends to get in the way of making good financial decisions. Bob and I are going to break down the emotions that are hurting your financial planning, along with this week's financial propaganda. There's a lot out there in the news, media, that you need to avoid at all costs. Bob and I are going to point that out. And on our spotlight segment today, we have our colleague, Francesca Lagrateria. She's going to be with us talking about a real retirement plan that she worked on and just give you some insight, some ideas on, on how to make sure that your finances are on track. So let's hop to it, Bob. You know, Bob, when you're driving and those lights start to flash on your dashboard indicating something's wrong, you know, kind of gives you a warning about what's going to potentially happen to your car if you don't get it fixed. Well, a lot of times, you know, we have the same kind of forewarnings when it comes to our financial planning that let us know that, hey, maybe we're not on track the way we should be. And one of the bigger ones that I see, Bob, is you know, you just don't know what your lifestyle costs. And that's a big problem when it comes to really your planning and investing. Well, right. It's a big warning light. And you know what? Every one of you come in and tell us the same thing. I have no idea what it costs me to fund my lifestyle. Now, yeah, let me ask you, Rye, what word worries you more or turns you off more? Budget or a diet? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, they're, <laughs> I think they're both, they both sound like very unfun activities, I think is probably a fair assessment. Yeah. I mean, that's what it says, right? Diet says to you, oh, I got to deprive myself of the things I love to do. You know, it sounds like suffering. And uh, I think that's what yeah. happens when we think about budget. We think about dieting. It's no fun. You got to give up good stuff like chocolate chip cookies or, or whatever. And it's uh, unfortunate because it's really not that painful when it comes to budgeting. But I think that people just have this emotional negative reaction to it. Yeah. And it's kind of like one of those things where it's just one foot forward really gets the whole process started. And I think budgeting is probably the, the first place you start with the financial planning process. And the nice thing, Bob, now it's easier than ever. You know, We have our 360 financial portal, which we talk about a lot, where it's really easy to load in all of your you know, credit cards and things where you're saving and get a tally up of what you're actually spending you know, which is a lot easier than it used to be because of technology. It's the number one thing that you like about our 360 financial portal, whether you're a millennial or you're in that financial red zone or you're retired, is the fact that you can have your budget automated for you and have everything downloaded and tell you exactly where you're spending. Now, some of the benefits of that, Rye, are something that you and I found. We had subscriptions to things that we no longer wanted. But boy, once they get your credit card... They keep banging away at it. Yeah, and it's kind of like that closet that's really messy you don't want to go into because you don't really want to see like 
how many things you have to do. But I mean, really, I always think of it, Bob, it's almost like financial therapy, right? When you come into our office and we sit down and we just start talking about budgeting, because a lot of it's just a conversation. Um, you can kind of break down things without even you know, loading everything in initially and just you know, getting an idea of what you're spending on a, on a monthly, annual basis. It, you know, it doesn't take that long and it really gets the ball rolling in terms of where things need to go with your financial planning, which is huge. Yeah, it's an unfortunate, right? Because a lot of people let that uh, hurdle, you know, that one hurdle of like, I don't want to think about how much I'm spending or how much I need to have, you know, while I'm in retirement because you need a starting point, right? If I'm, um, you know, I'm up in Long Island this weekend. So if I'm in the middle of Long Island and I say, hey, Rye, I want to come visit you at your office. And you ask a, a very legitimate question, like, Bob, where <laughs> are you? And I said, no idea. How are you going to give me directions? It's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. And I, but I think, you know, funny enough, that's how we do our financial planning, right? Having a portfolio invested is not a financial plan, right? Because Hardly. if you have a portfolio that's invested, you don't know really is it achieving your goals or not, right? You might have too much cash and you may need more growth in your portfolio and you're not getting it. Or maybe you're taking way too much risk that's jeopardizing what you're going to need in retirement. But unless you know what your budget numbers are, you really can't put together a true portfolio allocation that's right for you. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter what stage you are at your life right now. But by not sitting down and having someone do a projection or run a financial plan, you don't really know if you're saving properly. You don't know all the different ways you can cut taxes. I mean, you say it all the time. Money saved in taxes is just as green as money made in the marketplace. I had someone in this week who was selling a big piece of real estate. Matter of fact, it was 90% of his net worth. And for 40 years, he never put money into a defined benefit pension or put any money into a retirement account because no one told him he could. He, he paid a million dollars in taxes in his lifetime that were unnecessary. Yeah. And that's the one thing we see neglected more than anything else, Bob, is taxes, right? There's probably a lot of things with regards to taxes you could be doing now that can really lessen the amount you have to pay to the government. But I think it was Will Rogers that said, you know, I can love the government. I can still love the government paying less taxes. So it's, you know, why pay more than you have to? Yeah. And why get focused on the wrong things, right? It's not about achieving a certain net worth or a certain account balance, right? There's things we can't predict, but you know what we can all do? We can prepare. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, you know, I don't have that budget for retirement. I have an investment account, but I don't really have a financial game plan that's going to take me through retirement. Here's your shot to get that analysis done. If you're one of the first 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. It's not an investment plan. It's a total financial master plan where we're going to analyze everything for you in your financial life. Simply just bring in those statements, print them off the computer. We're going to analyze all of it for you. We're going to actually build you your own personalized financial portal so we can have a bird's eye view of everything going on. We're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? What hidden costs do you have in those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products? We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. We're going to look at income income so critical in retirement. How are you going to replace that income in retirement? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? If the market has another crash like it did in 2008, are you protected? Is your portfolio bulletproofed? We're going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. Of course, there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update. 
with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. This is Ryan Payne filling in for Bob to deliver this week's market update. The major U.S. indices sold off this week as inflation fears returned to the market. Friday's job reports show tightening labor markets are leading to gains in U.S. workers' wages. The unemployment rate fell to a 49-year low of 3.7%. That's the lowest since 1969, while the average hourly earnings rose 0.3% this past month. Higher wages in a tighter labor market all point towards higher inflation. And this played out in the bond market as the 10-year Treasury reached a multi-year high of over 3.2% this week. Now, to put that in perspective, the beginning of last October, the 10-year note stood closer to 2.2%. That's a 45% jump in just one year. Higher interest rates are bad news for your bond portfolio because as interest rates rise, bond prices decline. In other news, trade concerns have diminished after the U.S. and Canada agreed to a revamp of the North American Free Trade Agreement. This could lead to an eventual negotiation with China and less stress on the global markets in general. Conditions are clearly changing. Is your portfolio positioned to handle higher interest rates and the changing global landscape? If you'd like a second opinion, give us a call or text at 844-752-6692. Make sure your portfolio is positioned for the future at 844-752-6692. That's this week's Market Update. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I like to give you common sense advice you can use on your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great way for you to get started with the financial planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great way to get started with the financial planning process. You can download it for free. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. So Bob, you know, we talk a lot about how human nature is really not conducive for making good investment decisions. So I thought it would be a good time to discuss some of the worst stories that you and I have seen when it comes to investors making very bad decisions about their money and really, how do we defend against that? And you know, one that we've seen a lot, especially when we're in a bull market, and we're in a ten-year bull market right now, is greed. Right? You know, and now you have some great examples of uh, where greed got in the way of a good investment strategy. Well, Robbie, you know the famous movie from twenty-five years ago, Wall Street. The, the, yes. the quote was, "Greed is good." Right. <laughs> Well, guess what? Go? It is bad. Greed is bad, <laughs> it's and it's bad. really dangerous to your financial health. Yeah, you, know, you know that story that uh, that friend of mine that had put uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars into a penny stock ran up to seven million dollars, right? The most uh, once in a lifetime chance. He gambled and won, and uh, didn't want to sell at fourteen and a quarter because he thought the stock would trade at fourteen and three eighths. And the sad and then- story is that went to zero, and he now lives on Social Security. He could be sitting with a portfolio of twenty, thirty million dollars today, just clipping coupons on his municipal bond portfolio. That's where yeah, greed can hurt you. That is one of the most painful, no pun intended, stories. I remember another story, Bob, of a client that you had back in the nineties when the tech bubble before the tech bubble burst, when technology stocks were rocking and rolling, you had a retired couple. They had most of their money in a diversified strategy with a lot of current income from bonds that come due, and they were so seduced by the tech bubble that they took all their money and they put it into tech stocks like near the top of you the You know, market. it wasn't so much they were seduced, right? They were jealous. They had a brother-in-law who had put all his money into tech stocks and they had more money than he did 10 years earlier. And now he had more money than them. And he thought, wow, you know, you guys gave us bad advice. They pulled the account. They put all the money into Janus mutual funds, which were 100% in tech stocks. 
They lost 60% of their net worth in a period oh, of 12 months. That hurts to see your net worth go down by 60%. And, you know, the problem with that is that's the reality of the markets, right? You know, we, we forget about these things. And I say that like the weather, we all have a very short term memory when it comes to investing in the markets and we forget. You know, especially with things going really well right now. We see this a lot when you're coming into our office right now and we do a full analysis of your portfolio. We take that holistic snapshot. We're seeing that a lot of times there's a lot of risk in your portfolio and you don't even know it. Yeah, it's so true, Ryan. It's not just greed, it's the other side of the coin as well as fear. You know, selling yes. right after the market crashed in 2008 or not investing because you're waiting for the next 2008 decline. That was 10 years ago. Yeah, that's right. And I, you know, I see that right now and you can probably attest to this, like you probably have too much money sitting in cash. And let's face it, interest rates have gone up over the last year or so, but you're still only getting a percent, maybe 2% if you're really knocking, you know, the cover off the ball or what you're earning on your savings accounts right now. And that just doesn't cut it. Uh, You know, it's not going to get you through retirement. If inflation's been closer to 3%, getting a 2% return, you're actually losing money against purchasing power. And that's one of your biggest risks as as an investor, Bob. Right. You know the old saying, history doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. And the last I checked, we haven't repealed the business cycle, right? You go from, you know, up cycles to down cycles. We had a tremendous down cycle in 2008. We've been in an up cycle now for the last 10 years. And people are hoping it's different this time. Yeah. Well, I got to, I got to give some credit. I, I met with an investor this past week. You know, he has all his money in large cap U.S. stocks, which has done mm-hmm. tremendously well over the last decade. And he said, look, I've been really lucky here. And, you know, it's always good to discern, Bob, and know that, you know, I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> when you start confusing, <laughs> as you like to say, brains with a bull market, that's when you get into trouble. And I, I give this guy a lot of credit. And he's only three years away from retirement. And he knows, like, look, He's got all his money at risk in the markets. He's had a great run here. And it's kind of like when the market finally does pull back, it's too late. You can't help somebody like this. And if you're getting close to retirement, you've got to be so smart about how you're allocating your money and make sure you're protected. Yeah, well, that's such rational thought to see that uh, you know, you're having outside returns for the first time in a long time in a certain specific area of the market. But it's no different than what I saw in the 90s, right? People became you know, very greedy, very jealous, very hopeful, and uh, started putting way too much money in growth stocks and then ignored all the other opportunities. And of course, with hindsight, we're all brilliant. But, you know, the thing is, we're not asking people to not be emotional. We don't want you not to be emotional. What you need with a financial plan is you automatically become less emotional. Yeah. And it goes back to what we talked about in that first segment is, you become less emotional, you know, and you become more goal driven when you start to map out that plan for retirement. If you don't have that, it's a really big missing piece of the puzzle. You know, you don't want to just have this collection of investments you hope is going to get you through retirement because the reality of it is if it's not correlated to your goals, there's a good chance you're going to screw it up. You know, whether you're, again, you're not going to take enough risk, you're going to have too much money in cash where you're not earning a rate of return on your money that's above and beyond inflation. But on the flip side, you may be taking way too much risk. And let's face it, Bob, if you're 10 years older now from 2008 and we have a big market decline again, you know, and now you're retired or you're ready to retire, it's not the same situation that you were in 10 years ago when you can just make it up. That's so true, right? As you know, nothing grows to the sky, right? And everything is cyclical. So if you have a really well diversified portfolio, you're going to have something that's causing you pain at all times, right? We're very excited about our growth stocks making all-time record highs, but you also should have something that's not doing well. And it's how you react and how you invest in those periods that determines the ultimate return that you achieve in your portfolios. Yeah. Kind of in short, Bob, it's like you need an unemotional process that keeps your emotions in check. Because if you don't have that, it's going to be very hard to be a successful investor over the rest of your life. You know, that's right, Ryan. If you're thinking, I need to be less emotional. If you're thinking, I need to be financially healthy. I want to know what I own in my portfolio is appropriate to what I'm trying to achieve. I want to know if I'm being overcharged by my portfolio. I need to know if I'm in a position to succeed. Well, here's your opportunity to know. If you're one of our next 10 callers and you saved over 200000 for retirement, we're going to create for you a full holistic review. We're going to look at everything. It's the only financial review you'll ever need. Gather all your statements, put them in a folder or a shopping bag. 
We're going to take all this information, review it with you, and build your own 360 financial portal that will allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life in real terms at your convenience. We're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, fees, and income, right? We want to be totally diversified and like be balanced. We want to have a balanced portfolio to help you bulletproof your strategy in the event of any type of market disruption, cost and fees. I don't know about you, but I don't like being overcharged. We want to help you take that money out of Wall Street's pocket and put it back in your pocket where it belongs. And lastly, income. We can increase the cash flow of your portfolio with a more reliable, dependable income stream. Everybody needs to refill that income gap that you have once you're retired or in order to stay retired. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right, folks. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. 6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Take the pain challenge. Get that second opinion. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. This is no pain, no gain. Max Radio. Time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, I actually found a very interesting article this week that I want to enlighten you with. Do tell, right? I will. I will. So Just hypothetically, Bob, if you would have met Jeff Bezos back in 1999 and you had an opportunity to buy a stock, would you do it? Of course. Guy's a visionary. I mean, it seems that easy, right? Well, you would think it's that easy, but one of the world's best professionals, Ron Barron, who runs Barron Mutual Funds, met Jeff Bezos in 1999, had the opportunity to buy Amazon, and he decided to go against it. He was too busy pitching Jeff Bezos on buying a stock in his portfolio. And by doing that, he missed out on a 2,533% return. Well, Ron Barron is a uh, terrific mutual fund manager, but like all terrific mutual fund managers, they underperform the underlying market net of their fees. So it's great entertainment, but why do you want to pay someone like that a fee when they do all that work and miss out on the greatest stock of the last 20 years. Yeah, exactly right. And that's the thing that amazes me is you may have mutual funds in your portfolio and you're probably paying higher fees than you'd like to know in the side of those portfolios to have a quote unquote professional manager. And here's a case where one of the considered one of the greatest professional managers of all time, I'd argue that point, had a chance to buy Amazon at one of the lowest prices ever, even got to talk to the CEO and still miss the opportunity. So I think there's this kind of a lure, Bob, about you know hiring a stock picker who's going to be able to outperform the market over time. And based on statistics, it's just not true. No, it's just not true, right? And the problem is, is you have higher internal cost. You also have an average normal human being trying to do extraordinary things by trying to predict what's going to do well going forward and what's not. I mean, just think about the technological changes you've had in your lifetime. And you know the companies that are now some of the biggest companies in the world that you never heard of 20 years ago. I mean, no one has that gifted insight. No one has that ability, right? I think you summed it up, Bob. I think uh, you know most people on Wall Street are ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things, and we, you know, they try so hard to make themselves seem extraordinary in your eyes. And the reality of it is, you know, most of these quote unquote professionals. 
they're not that good. <laughs> well, here's the thing. That's why we buy the market, right? Because we don't know which company is going to be the best performing stock over the next 12 months. But we do know we're going to own it because we own everything that's publicly traded. So at the end of the year, I'll tell you all the great companies that we own, Rye, that have been the best performers. But I can't tell you until January of 2019. Yeah, and you see a lot of that right now. You know, I see a lot of portfolios, and you may have this in your own portfolio, where maybe you have Facebook, maybe you have Amazon, and it's doing really, really well. And you have to ask yourself, am I that good, or am I just lucky? And odds are, let's be honest with ourselves, we're probably just lucky. And then the second question is, at some point, and I think Facebook's a great example of this, Bob, you know, Facebook lost over 20% of its value in one day. You know, what kind of risk do you have in your portfolio where maybe you are sitting on a stock you think is going to be stellar? You don't know when it's going to finally stop and start to go down. You know, there's no gifted insight and in when to do that. Well, you know, Ry, that lesson's been learned over and over. You know, back in the late 90s, uh, the big winner was Cisco, you know, the company that makes routers. And the people that a lot of speculators, you know, made money in Cisco. I met with a lot of people and I said, Bob, I own Cisco. Why do I need anything else? And I always said the same thing. You know, I miss Cisco. What's the next one? And they could never <laughs> tell me. So it's only in hindsight that we know how brilliant we are in our speculations. But when it comes to achieving your goals, do you want to be a speculator or an investor, right? You know, you know me, Bob. I am a very conservative guy, so I always go with being an investor. I know when I'm lucky, and I'm usually lucky, not good, when it comes to picking the right stocks. Well, see, that's the problem with financial propaganda. I mean, week in and week out, they put out reams and reams and reams of information of why you should not be a smart investor, why you should be a speculator, why you should trade. You know, this week, Wall Street Journal came out and said, we're not calling a top, but it sure looks like one. <laughs> so this is it, Bob. This is the top of the market. We should sell everything and finally put all of our savings into gold. Well, their that's rationale the is really tells poor, me. right? You know, the reason why they think it's a top is because the market made a new high. Well, that's not a real compelling reason because the market can keep making new highs and it has now for, you know, most of the year. Well, they also cite the fact that there's mergers going on. Mergers and acquisitions happen all the time, but because there were three big ones this week with Comcast, with Sirius Radio, with Michael Kors, they're saying that's indicative of a market top. And you know what? There's something called hindsight bias. And it tells you what happened, you know, after the fact. So many of these financial propaganda articles are trying to tell you what's going to happen because of what's happened in the past. It doesn't give you any gifted insight into the future. No, it doesn't. And I think, you know, the best example is, Bob, you and I both worked at Merrill Lynch. And, you know, let's face it, I've, I left Merrill Lynch in July of 2008, which only months before Merrill Lynch basically went out of business, right? They were bought by Bank of America for almost nothing. And I can tell you, I was in that company... And no one gave me any heads up that even being in that company, that they had problems and you know the stock was going to plummet over the course of the next couple months. And I think that's where you have to really, really be honest with yourself, especially if you're going to use your portfolio for retirement. Have you made decisions in your portfolio, you know, ridden a, a stock up that you've done really well with? Is it luck? Are you good? And you know what kind of risks do you really have in that underlying portfolio that could jeopardize your retirement? You sound like Clint Eastwood in, in Dirty Harry. <laughs> you feel lucky, punk? I mean, you know, do you want to try and just be lucky about your investments, or do you want to have a strategy that gives you the highest yeah. probability of success? Bob, I'm glad you said that because I've always fancied myself the Clint Eastwood of investing. Um, <laughs> well, you are a handsome man. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, I think mom says that, so I'll take that. I have, a, I have a face for radio. But no, if, look, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I look, I've got a lot of risk in my portfolio. I know I have underlying risk. I know I've been lucky with the stock picks that I have. I don't have a real investment plan. I don't have a financial plan. Here's your shot to make sure you're on track for retirement. We have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that looks at everything. Simply just print off those statements as they come in at the end of the month. We're going to take them. We're going to build you your own personalized portal so we can get a holistic view of everything. And we're going to look at all those core components to make sure you're on track. You're going to look at diversification. There probably is hidden risks in your portfolio you're not thinking about. We're going to show you what those pitfalls are, and we're going to show you how to protect yourself against the next market correction. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than hoping the market's going to go up this year. We're going to show you how to build a reliable, consistent income stream to fill in that income gap in retirement. 
environment. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden fees in those mutual funds. Those managers have been underperforming and you're paying more for it. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And if you're bringing your tax return, we'll have our CPA partner review that. Make sure you're doing everything to optimize taxes for retirement. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invest it. Then we're just going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we've been working on for literally 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left. If you're one of the next lucky callers and you have over 200,000 saved for your retirement, we'll create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, there's no strings attached, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. North, South, East, and really East. That's where you can find the Payne Capital Management Team. Serving North and South Florida, Connecticut, Philadelphia, and of course, right here in the Big Apple. Stay tuned for more No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you are on track for retirement. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a baseline to help you get started with the financial planning process, make it less daunting. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Simply download it for free. If you text the word BULLISH to 555-888, that's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can check us out at bbullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to bbullish.com. You can even subscribe to the show there. And you can catch me on most major networks every week talking about the markets, giving you our insights, what we think is happening. You can check that out. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. And if it's a really good question, Bob and I will answer those questions right here on the show. And to help us with questions today, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood, down in North Carolina. Mark, how's it going, man? Good to be with you, gentlemen. You know, I just realized, Ryan and Bob, that my Panthers play your Eagles. Well, I better be careful. You know, New York City folks don't like that. But I know you guys are Philly boys at heart, and my Panthers are playing up there in a couple of weeks. I had this great idea just to hit me. What if we did a live show from the stadium? I mean, well, I, I just I wouldn't like to see a cry, Mark, when your Panthers go down. So <laughs> that, I don't think you want to do that. I don't think we want to get Bob away from the beach. It's not really his. Uh, that's not his mo. You know. <laughs> Look, you guys had a bad week last weekend. You guys just don't want to whoop it. I know how that goes. I see some trash. Well, you know, we are the happening. Super Bowl champions, but uh, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> and uh, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I better move on before this uh, trash talk turns against me. Let's kick it off with a question this week from Ben. He's in Morristown, New Jersey. And he says, Bob, I've owned my own business for 20 years. Well, congratulations, Ben. And I'm thinking about retirement within the next three to four years. Am I better? off to try and sell the business or retain ownership and hope my employees can run it effectively without me actually being there. Hey, Ben, that's a great question. And you're asking it at the right time because you want to think about what to do with your business three to four years before you retire. See, a lot of businesses, you know, may be profitable, but maybe too dependent on you or maybe too dependent on a single customer. And a buyer may not be interested as a result of that. You may not have trained your employees properly. Uh, you know, to fill the role that you fill. I mean, it's your business. This is your baby. This is something you built over a long period of time. So it's very difficult, both, you know, emotionally and financially, you know, to get the true value. So what you want to do is think about, 
you know, if you're on vacation, how well does that business run without you? I mean, I'm talking about going vacation the other side of the world, you know, where no one's calling you every five minutes or they can't get in touch with you. That's when you find out if you have a business that can be sold, you know, versus the business that's dependent on you. Now, Rye, yeah. you recommended a book to me a number of years ago, and I think Ben would benefit from reading this book called Built to Sell. Yes, it's a great book about just talking about the saleability of your business. And I think that also plays into this is why it's so critical to run some numbers to make sure you know the numbers will work in your favor, uh, whether you had a buyout over time or you know basically if you took an income over X amount of years, however you structure it, because that can have a big impact on how comfortably you retire. Because we see that a lot too, Bob. Like a client of mine who's an accountant owns a CPA practice, and he has a couple options. You know, his partners have offered him, "Well, we can pay you this much to buy you out right now, or you can collect an income over how many years." And to your point, Bob, you know, like you have to think about what's the viability of my business and what makes sense financially speaking. And that's really why having a financial plan and running those numbers, which you can calculate out to see, you know, what's going to put you in the position where you can retire securely. You know, Rye, I think the operative word here is retire. You know, retirement is not going into your office once a week to make sure somebody's not screwing up the business you built, you know, so you work so hard to build. And I found with most of my clients that are retired, you know, taking a buyout, taking the money and focusing on your hobbies and your life and your grandchildren is really what they want to do. And once they're away from the business for a couple of months, it's the last thing they ever want to think about or go back to. Don't get any ideas, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it actually does remind me, though, when you go on vacation and you try to check out, but you find yourself checking your email every five seconds. You're never on vacation, Mark. We all know that. It's something that, uh, you know, your clients don't care that you're on vacation. You've got to focus on their needs and you got to focus on your business. So being retired is being retired. And I think, Ben, you're asking all the right questions right now. And it's something you really got to think about and read that book, Built to Sell. I think that's going to help you a lot. Yeah, thanks for writing in, Ben. We, of course, wish you the best of luck with that. And, of course, if you'd like more specific advice, you can call in, and they'd be happy to help you with that as well. Next question comes to us from Grace in White Plains, New York. And Grace says, Ryan, my dad died just six months ago, and I'm a little worried about my mom, who's in her late 70s, and is now in charge of handling the investments for the first time. What should I do about that? Yeah, this is very common. In fact, I sat down with a widow this past week, and the same thing she had proceeds coming from an insurance policy. So there's money there she never had before. Luckily, in her case, she has a pension. But again, I think this comes back to you never want to put the cart before the horse. And if you're not looking at, number one, your budget, which we talked a lot about today, and everything kind of follows what that budget is, you know, Grace, what you really need to figure out first off is how much am I spending? And a lot of times you may need six to 12 months before things normalize again and see what that budget is. So, you know, you don't want to get ahead of yourself and start getting money invested that you may have sitting in cash because you think you need to do something before you have that budget in place, Bob. And we, we can't emphasize enough, you know, how important that is. Yeah, you know, right. This is why in depth planning with our 360 financial portal, it's the most critical thing you can do right now. Every single spouse, every single widow that I've worked with who was not well planned had problems. You think just because you have someone who's knowledgeable like your spouse who's managing the portfolio and you know collecting all of your pension benefits and your and your incoming you know recurring revenue you know it doesn't mean that that's going to continue to work when they're gone you know you need to know is there a spousal benefit you need to know how long these things last and it's just those questions don't get asked unless you sit down together now right every joint account relationship you work with there's an uninterested spouse you know, there's only one person that really wants to focus. This stuff's boring to most people. So it's so critical that they sit down with you right now. Yeah, and that's just having, I can't stress enough with the way technology is, and that's why our 360 portal is so awesome, is just have everything in one place. You know, have all your stuff with one login. It's such a pain in the neck to find all these things later, try to get logged in and not know where everything is. You know, you can even put your your will up there. You can have everything centralized, which just makes life so much easier. And now we have the technology to do it. You know, Ryan, let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how do Ben and Grace sound in terms of being financially organized? I 
mean, I hate to be the uh, the bad cop, but I mean, this is like a two or three. I feel like there's a lot of issues here that need to be worked out. Now, I'd like to ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to ten, how financially organized are you? How financially organized would you like to be? Well, of course you'd want to be a 10. And if you want to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers who have saved at least 200000 for retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own holistic view of what you own and why you own it. This is a goal-based 360 financial portal. It will allow you to look at your net worth and your investments in real time when it's convenient for you, when you feel like looking at it. You'll have all of your goals programmed and tell you how you're progressing toward those goals and tell you once you've achieved those goals. This is a free analysis that everyone should take advantage of. What we'd like you to do is take your statements. They just came in for the month. They just came in for the last quarter. Throw them in a shopping bag. Don't even open up the envelopes. What we're going to do is break down your portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, fees, and income. You want to be truly diversified. You want to be balanced in the event that the market becomes more volatile. You want to bulletproof that strategy by not having all your eggs in one basket or in 19 different accounts. You want to have your cost evaluated. I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged. and I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. And lastly, everyone has an income gap in retirement. We want to be certain that you have that income while you're in that financial red zone. More importantly, the biggest goal of being retired is to stay retired. Uh, dependable income stream is the key to achieving that goal. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together for you into one total financial master plan that will answer the age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and with the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, 844 844- 752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your chance to get a second opinion. Take the pain challenge at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right, and that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we're simple men. So of course, we like to keep it simple for you. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. Just a great way to get started with the financial planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, 555-888. That's the word bullish, the 555 555- 888, what you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show this morning, Francesca Lagrateria. And as we like to say, it's always good to be one of Frankie's financial friends. Hello, Frankie. hello. Good morning. Thanks Great. for having me. It's always fun to have Frankie Lagrateria on our show. 
I think so. So Frank, you are a colleague here at Payne Capital Management, one of our star financial advisors. And this is our segment, the Spotlight segment, where we actually review a real retirement plan and we talk about some of the things that we did to help, you know, in this case, a couple get on track and become what we would call retirement ready. And they actually asked us to give them a shout out on the radio this morning. <laughs> they I don't to- know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there listening. Yeah. So basically, why don't you talk about the case that we worked on and just some of the things that you helped them do to get on their path to financial freedom? We did a few things. Definitely sat down, took a look at everything, which is a lot larger than it seems because they had over 19 accounts. (laughs) I know because I input all the data and I I was sweating at the meeting because I was putting so much data in because they had so many different accounts and that was one of the problems, right? It's like the spouse was just like, I, how am I going to deal with this if God forbid something happens to my husband? And that's such a big Is thing. Is that called where, diversification, Frankie? That's what they called it. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I took a deeper look at all those different holdings, a similar theme kept coming up, which was large cap growth. <laughs> As we see a lot, large cap growth, cash, and stable value funds. So three different areas in 19 different accounts. So that's not actually diversification. It's the great irony, right? It's like you think, okay, I have my money at lots of different institutions. I must be diversified. But the reality of it is when you put it all on one spreadsheet and you look at it from a bird's eye view, a lot of times you own a lot of the same things. They're just at different places. That's not diversification. Because the big issue is you know, when, when it's up, it's up. That's awesome. But the big issue is when it's down, you have all these accounts acting the same. And that's not how you want it. You want your accounts to have you know, different asset classes and you want your, your accounts to actually be allocated differently. You know, you're not going to have a Roth account allocated the same way as your taxable account. You, know, you want to take advantages in different accounts and use you know, different tax benefits to work for you. A really good points, Frankie. But What exactly did you recommend they do different than what they were currently doing? So a big thing is consolidation. We sat down and we said, hey, out of all of these, you know, 19 accounts, we can get you down to less than five. That's the big thing. Consolidation. You don't need to have 15 different IRAs. I'd like to interject here. The spouse's face like lit up when we said, look, we're going to be able to have one login, show you where all your different accounts are. We're going to consolidate, like you said, down to five accounts. But she was so stressed about not knowing where things were. And here we were able to build her this one place that we could log into and she could see everything. And she didn't have to worry about all the different places her husband happened to be, you know, squirreling away money per se. Absolutely. And that's like like anything else. I think what a lot of you do is you'll put money into different accounts with different, you know, targets and specific reasons for having that money investor, specific goals. But what really works is to manage your money in concert with every other dollar that you have. Now, there's nothing wrong, you know, with having your municipal bonds in your personal account, right, or having growth stocks in your retirement account. But you need a coordinated plan and you need a simple view. You know, by putting this all on paper, it's crystal clear what needs to be done. But by having 19 different accounts, there's no way in the world you can understand what you own and more importantly, why you own it. Wouldn't you agree, Frank? I absolutely agree. And to Ryan's point also, you know, having that one portal is nice, but it's also nice to kind of have this team where she has the portal. We can walk her through it. God forbid something happens to her husband, but she has a team that she can depend on. And that was a big thing for them, Mm -hmm. too, is working with someone they can pick up the phone and say, you know, I need help. I trust you guys. And I think the worst thing you can do for your spouse, if you handle all the finances and God forbid something happens to you and, you know, maybe it's with lots of different brokers or financial representatives you have, there's not one central person that your spouse is comfortable with, you know, is going to be able to walk, you know, him or her through everything if God forbid something happens to you. I mean, that's huge in terms of taking stress off of a grieving spouse. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know what, Rye? I always say financial planning is about love. If you love your spouse, get some planning done because if something happens to him or her and suddenly they have to manage the finances after being in the dark for 40, 50 years, boy, is there going to be hell to pay. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. And absolutely. And also, you know, during that time, that's the last thing that should be on your mind is, oh, and now where's the checkbook, right? That's, that's not what should be your, your focus. The other well, the thing, thing I say in your analysis, Frankie, is the income went up dramatically. They're going to have, just because of your repositioning, you know, an additional 3.4% a year. That's an enormous amount of cash flow that they didn't have before. 
Absolutely. And using it to their advantage now, using it to compound, because what they were really fortunate with is one of the few people in this world, Bob, who have a pension. So mm, nice. we're able to use pensions. that 3.4. <laughs> and Bob. <laughs> and Bob, yeah. <laughs> it's a good, Bob, it's a small boat, a but it's a good boat. <laughs> I'm not retiring on it, but I have one. <laughs> So we're able to actually compound that money out and let it keep growing for them, which is going to be, you know, over 20 years, an extra $600,000 in their pocket. Not too shabby. Yeah, and that's the thing that always gets overlooked is, you know, what kind of income plan do you have in retirement, right? I mean, it's it's great when you're working, you have the money coming in, but when that income check or that check stops, you know, how are you going to fund that? And that's where it's so important optimizing income on your portfolio. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a review like this, I need to consolidate, I need to know where everything is, I want to uh, make sure that I'm showing my spouse the love, because that's what we do here at Paying Capital Management. This is your last shot to do. We have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, Frankie Lagrateria will run for you our total financial master plan just like this, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review, not an investment plan, but a financial plan. Simply just you know, bring in those statements, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to load them all in and build you your own personalized portal so you can get a bird's eye view of where everything is and see how everything's allocated and look at all those critical components. You know, What kind of income is your portfolio generating? Are you prepared for retirement? Do you have an income gap? We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Do you have lots of different accounts? all doing the same thing. We're going to show you where you're overweighted, underweighted, how to protect you if the market goes down. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in these portfolios that you don't see. We're going to show you in those mutual funds, annuities, brokerage products, You know where you're paying too much and how to reduce cost on your portfolio. And if you bring in your tax return, we have a CPA partner that'll review that to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. Then we're going to tie it all together to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And all you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your personal retirement, our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. But there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. All right. Well, another great show. And it's always good to have our favorite financial friend or you'd like to be one of Frankie's financial friends. I got to come up with the right way to say that, Frankie, because I love it. It's all about Frankie's financial friends. And a special shout out to Dr. Anthony and Melissa, (laughs) who I know are listening. (laughs) So hello, hello. (laughs) One of the many friends of Frankie's, (laughs) financially speaking. Um, well, great to have you on the Frankie's show, Frank. Too financial. <laughs> <laughs> Say it too fast; it just doesn't come out right. Uh, but great having you on the show. Awesome as always. Thank you, thank you, Big Bob. Another great weekend. Great doing the show with you, my man, Dad. Yeah, right. It's always great to be on, especially when Frankie presents another total financial masterpiece. <laughs> well said, Bob. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, have a great weekend, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.